Hello, I'm Donald Gallagher. I live in Jersey City, and in Jersey City, I'm a member of Grace Church Van Voris, which is an Episcopal congregation, which includes as many people as possible. Actually, I married somebody here once. I did, I married somebody here once. It was hysterical. And I'm also a member of the Radical Fairies, and that is also one of my spiritual homes, as well as Reverend Billy, and the Church of Stop Shopping. I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. And the Church of Stop Shopping Gospel Choir. I'm so thrilled that you've come here to visit with my uh, project, which I've been working on since 1987. Actually, I know what date it was, because it was Bach's 300th birthday. <laughs> when I came here, this place was a disaster. There were five people in the congregation, and they were mostly like old black ladies who had been here since they were little girls. And that was it. Every window is original. It's a small It's just those pieces that are a different color. Those are the pieces that are, are, were from bullet holes. Because, I mean, this was a riot neighborhood. I mean, it was, it was, it was wild and crazy. Yeah. And this, this is how I knew what it looked like in 1853 when it was finished. Oh, wow. And so this was my model. This was clear enough. This, this pattern was clear enough. Now, this I couldn't really figure out exactly what it was. But I could tell that it was like a triangular shape with some kind of floral design. And I just got so made that. Like here, when I was getting ready to work up here, I discovered one of, an original corner. If you look at this, this lower part of the arch. And, but I also found the colors, which was really valuable to really get that sense. And they saw that I was doing those photographs. They also saw that I was doing what the photograph said. So that's why they gave me permission. And uh, there, was, there, were, there were some conflicts. Some people didn't like this at all. Uh, but luckily, one day, the bishop of, the, of this diocese was there. His name is Bishop Spong. He was like an outrageously radical dude to begin with. <laughs> and he said, OK, do any of you have an actual better idea? <laughs> <laughs> no. no one said anything, and he was like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> then just be quiet and let him do what he's doing. <laughs> it's beautiful. And like, but you may not like it, but the others are going to. People started to get to know me, right? They're like, oh, God, there he is. <laughs> and it was like, but they did. Because in a way, once you started doing it, you realize, this is kind of cool. <laughs> and this, this front wall was... Again, the, the roses, I couldn't really tell what they were, but I, I got them from a, a church in um, Vienna. And we changed the words, and the words originally were, and the Lord has come into his temple, let all the earth be silent before him. I <laughs> yeah, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm not I mean, I grew <laughs> I mean, it was, maybe it worked in that book, but that's not the book we got. Yeah. So I just, so we had this thing, and it was like people came in with a lot of really good suggestions. And this one, several people came in, it's from Corinthians by Paul. It says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And the way it reads in the story is basically, whatever you do, I'm here for you. It doesn't, no matter how bad it is, I'm still, I'm still here for you. That's basically the idea. So it's no longer shut the fuck up, guys. Here, but right, no, it's yeah. I'm like yeah. Just be, be as stupid as you need to be. Here, I'm, you know, uh, my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm. The radical fairies in New York City have been here for like many years. I discovered them uh, in 1990. 
Well, Harry Hay began this, and Harry Hay came from the two-spirit tradition of the Navajo and the Anasazi and, you know, from that part of the Southwest. And so he really thought we need to create our own spirituality, and we do that as a group. And part of the way that we do it is by having a beard and wearing a skirt. <laughs> having like having like really short hair and being like a football player and wearing a dress. It was, so it was like that idea, that simplicity of just doing drag, but not as like a woman, just as yourself, but like at the same time, like ignoring the fact that you're wearing women's clothes. And it's not about being a transvestite or, you know, transitional, you know, whatever. That was it. And I thought that was actually something that sold me. It was just like kind of, yeah, I like it. I'm just going to, I'm going to be like this butch dude, but I'm going to wear clothes that people are going to like, what is with that? You know, like, I, you know, <laughs> what is with that? You know, like, it's, 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 he is presenting as whatever, not she, but like something weird in between, or not even close to in between, just not even near in between, just he but in a dress and just as feminine. And that also, just that whole idea too of like really finding the feminine and find like just in that, in that process, the compassion that each pe people really were feeling with each other. Well, what I love about the Church of Stop Shopping this is also like a very tight family. Uh, we really do help and love each other in a way that's like kind of very unique for like a very disparate group of people. People who probably ordinarily would not even talk to each other possibly. But like they really are, have become a very close knit group. We have got this gratitude. And uh, what I think we bring to the audience is joy a kind of a joy with a serious message that may not be so easy to understand or to take. Pointing out that like shopping is war, shopping is like the structure, shopping is the end of the environment, shopping, because that's, that's who's doing it. Like the more that we, we consume, the world is going to get worse and worse unless we like really like pay attention. Love is power. Billy really preaches it well. It's rational and it's like for real. And it's also, it's not, it's not hopeless. It's like actually saying that we can change it. We have that power. It's possible. But it's at the same time, it's like we got to get radical again. We got to get wild and crazy. We got to put our neck on the line. We got to be out there. You know, and we, you know, that's, that's the only way. Where does it start? It starts with me, you know, it starts with you. It starts with everybody in the room. That's who it starts with, you know. Any social change I've ever been involved with has always started with individual people. And then others say, oh, yeah, I believe what you're doing and I'll, I'll, I'll help you with that. Because you walk by me, and I walk by you. Everyone we've ever loved is walking by too. Because the air around you moves like light. I gotta go for walks and fall with the night. Earth, hallelujah! <laughs> Change, hallelujah! <laughs>